Hello, good day everyone. This is Andrew again. And now we're going to discuss solenoid valve and cylinder troubleshooting. Okay, let's start. First thing that we need to do is to define what is a solenoid valve. A solenoid valve is an electrical piloted device that supplies air to operate a pneumatic actuator like pneumatic cylinder. Okay, we have the parts of the solenoid valve here. First is we have the electric connector. It is a part of the solenoid valve where electrical signal is connected. Solenoid coil. Part of the solenoid valve that generates magnetic field using electrical signal from electric connector to operate the valve. Next we have the manual override button. It is used to operate the valve manually without energizing the solenoid coil. Next, we have our pressure port, port connected to the main air supply or the air compressor. Then we have output signal port. It is the port connected to the actuator such as cylinder, gate valve, and etc. Silencer. It is connected to the exhaust port of the valve to reduce the pneumatic noise. How does it work? First, we have our solenoid valve here. Then, we need the other component, FRL, or filter regulator and lubricator. Then, we also need our compressor and our actuator. For this example, we have the pneumatic cylinder. First thing that we need to do is to connect the air compressor to our FRL. Then, connect our FRL to our solenoid valve. And after that, we need to connect our output ports to our actuator. Now, after turning on the air compressor and the FRL, you can see the airflow here. Now, let's apply an electrical signal. As you can see here, the air pressure while ago is at this port and now it transfer here and that will make the pneumatic cylinder to extend and the air inside the pneumatic cylinder will go out and it will pass through our silencer. Now let's remove our electrical signal. As you can see here, the pressure will go out here again and the air at this part of the pneumatic cylinder will go out and it will pass through our silencer here. Okay, now that's how our pneumatic cylinder works. Now let's go to our troubleshooting. We have our mechanical troubleshooting here. Let's say we apply electrical signal to our solenoid valve, but nothing happened. First thing that you need to do is to remove the electrical signal. Then, check the air supply. We need to check the FRL, and we also need to check the compressor. You can check the air compressor and the FRL by looking at their indicator here and here. If you saw that the air compressor and the FRL reading is not zero, it means the FRL and air compressor is okay. Next thing that we need to do is press the manual override button. By pressing the manual override button, The solenoid valve must operate without any electrical signal here. If the valve is not working after pressing the manual override button, there is a possibility that the valve or the cylinder is stuck up. If 
first thing that we need to do is turn off the FRL. After turning off the FRL, the reading here must be zero. Then, we need to isolate the pneumatic cylinder and the solenoid valve. Then here, try to push and pull the piston here manually. There must be no resistance. If a throttle is installed to your cylinder, try to check the throttle. The throttle must be too tight. That's why the air is not coming out. And if the cylinder is still have resistance, you need to check the components inside the cylinder. You might need to clean it or you might uh, need to change the whole pneumatic cylinder. Next thing that we need to do is to clean the valve. After cleaning the valve, we need to connect the solenoid valve to our pneumatic cylinder again. We need to turn on the FRL. Then we need to press the manual override button again. And this should work. Let's say after performing our mechanical troubleshooting and there's no problem, and when we apply electrical signal here, and the valve is still not working, it means the problem is not on the mechanical component. The problem might be in our electrical component. Now we have our electrical troubleshooting here. We need our multimeter here. First thing that we need to do is to remove the electrical connector. Then check the wire using the multimeter. You need to connect the positive side of the multimeter to the positive side of the connector and the negative side of the connector to the negative side of the multimeter. The multimeter setting must be in ohmmeter. If the reading is zero, it means short circuit. It means it's not good. You might need to replace your electrical connector. But if the reading is infinity, it is an open circuit, which is good. But that's not mean that there's no problem. There's a possibility that the wire is damaged. Check the termination and the condition of the wire. That's why we need to perform another test to be sure. Check the continuity of the pin and the wire. You need to connect the tester this way. Then the multimeter setting must be in ohmmeter. If the reading is zero, it means short circuit, it's good. And if the reading is infinity, it is an open circuit, it's not good. You might need to replace the electrical connector. And take note, you need to check the continuity of the positive wire here and the positive pin, the negative wire here and the negative pin and the ground wire here and the ground pin. The reading of this three wire must be zero ohms. Okay, next. Perform a diode test if the electrical connector contains a diode. First thing that we need to do is connect our multimeter like this. Then, multimeter setting must be in diode test. The reading should be approximately 0 0.5 volts with a tolerance of 0 0.15 to 0 0.2. If the reading is below 0 0.3 volts, it means the diode is damaged. You need to replace the connector. Then the next thing that we need to do is to invert the connection. 
we need to connect the negative terminal here at the positive side then the positive terminal here at the negative side then multimeter setting must be in diode test the reading should be zero and if the reading is not zero you need to replace your electrical connector next thing that we need to test is this one remove the solenoid coil check the solenoid coil using multimeter first thing that we need to do is to connect the negative lead of the multimeter here at the negative side and the positive lead of our multimeter here at the positive pin next the multimeter setting must be in ohmmeter if the reading is 15 ohms to 120 ohms it is good but this range is based on my experience only to be sure you need to check the specification of this solenoid coil but if the reading is near 0 ohms or near infinity it's not good you need to replace the solenoid coil another thing the connection of the multimeter here can be inverted because the solenoid coil doesn't have any polarity okay now let's have our review for mechanical troubleshooting we need to check the air supply air compressor and the frl we need to use the manual override button to check if the valve or the actuator is stuck up next if the valve is stuck up try to clean up the valve or replace it next turn off the air supply and try to push and pull the cylinder manually to ensure that the cylinder is not stuck up for electrical troubleshooting remove and check the electrical connector then remove and check the solenoid coil next we have our troubleshooting we need to test if the pneumatic cylinder has a leak first thing that we need to do is we have our frl here this must be connected to our air supply then this one must be connected to the pressure port of the valve and this output signal port must be connected at the cylinder and the other port of the cylinder must be connected here at the container with water next thing is we need to put a blanking plug here on one of the output port signal then we need to press the manual override button as you can see the airflow is at this way and take note that if the cylinder is at full extended position before while the cylinder is retracting there will be a bubble form here because the air at this part of the cylinder is coming out that makes the bubble here but if the cylinder reaches the fully retracted position there must be no bubble here anymore but if there are bubbles formed here while the cylinder is at fully retracted position there is a possibility that the seal on the cylinder is broken we can fix it by replacing the seal here or we can replace the whole cylinder okay next and this is our next setup we need to connect the output port here and the other port of the cylinder must be connected here and it must be connected here at the container with water we need to put a blanking plug here then press the manual override button and as you can see the cylinder extends and while the cylinder is extending there must be a bubble form here 
because the air at this part of the cylinder is coming out that makes the bubble here but if the cylinder reaches a full extended position and there are still bubble form here it means there's a possibility that the seal here is broken and to fix that we can open the cylinder and replace the seal or we need to replace the whole cylinder okay thank you for watching by the way you can read articles about my experience in automation industry by visiting my blog automationengineersdiary.blogspot.com you can put comments on my blog or you can send me an email if you have any questions about my blog and thank you for watching this video again and that's all for today thank you for watching this video please subscribe to my youtube channel click the notification bell to notify you for new video please like and share my youtube videos and like my facebook page please click see first on our facebook page to notify you for new posts if you like this video please comment nice Please comment negative and colon and put your negative comments about this video. Please type suggestion semicolon and put the suggestion about this video. And if you think that this video needs some improvement, just type improvement semicolon and put the things that you want to improve about this video. I will use all of your comment, negative comment suggestion and improvement so that i can improve all my future videos thank you for all the feedbacks and thank you again see you next time